Hello and welcome back to our JRPG series. This is episode 2 and in our last episode we've done the basics of setting up our game modes, controllers and so forth to ready to start putting our characters in. So in this episode we're going to put in our characters and our enemies into their positions for our game. So when they spawn in at the start of the game they're ready to go. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is place our battle positions into the world here. So we're going to drag our battle position actor we made last time. And we're going to drag three out here for our friendly units. So you can stagger them if you want. How you place them is totally up to you. Okay. And also going to add enemy ones over here. I'm going to drag this out, rotate it around so it faces the other way. And tick is any placement. And we're going to duplicate that. I have three spots for that. There we go. And that should do it just nicely there. Okay, so we've got the player positions and we've got the enemy positions here. And I'm going to set up their classes as well. So the classes for this are going to be uh, set up via these these uh, parent classes we've got here. So we're going to right click on the party unit base, wait child blueprint class, and this is going to be our uh, graystone. So we're using the paragon characters. So we're going to use the graystone unit for this, and we're going to use Faye and we're going to use Gideon. So I'm going to drag another one out. So create child class. It's going to be Gideon unit. I'm going to do another one for Faye. Faye unit. I'm going to put all three of those in my characters folder here to keep it a bit more tidy. Move them over there. And also on an enemy one as well. So I'm going to right click on here, create child class of this. And we're going to do this one as a spider unit. And we're going to drag that into my enemies folder. So in my characters, we're going to open up these and add our meshes to this. So we're going to go to the mesh and add graystone. And just wait for that to come in. There we are. And just make sure he's turning face the right way. So it's facing the X location. And we can click on here and we can choose the gray, graystone and in blueprint as well. And that will be all set up for us. Lovely. So, going to Gideon now. And we're going to set Gideon one up. Wait for that to come in. Place him in the right position. Rotate him around. And set his anim class to use Gideon. Brilliant. And finally, we have Fay Mesh Fay, and we'll use uh, this one. Okay, there's Fay. I'm going to drag her into position down here. Rotate her around and set her anim class up. Well, and just wait for that to come in. And there we go. And there she is, ready to go. Okay, so there's our player base units, and we're going to set up our any one as well. So we go to enemies, and we go to spider unit. And on the spider unit mesh, we're going to choose the spider as part of the infinity blade ones. We're going to use the greater spider one. And we will again put that into a correct position. So, rotate them around. This you may want to make the, the capsule bigger if you wish. So, I'll turn it up, up to you. It doesn't matter too much because we are using um, static placements, basically not running around doing stuff. So, uh, we can increase the radius a little bit. Like so. Compile and save that. Now I don't think there is an animation class for the spider, so we'll have to make one. 
So let's go ahead and make that enemy class here. So I'm going to go into their folder that's already in here. And I'm going to set up their animations here. I'm going to create an animation blueprint. And we're going to choose the uh, spider skeleton. Be the uh, greater spider skeleton. Okay, and we'll call this one spider. And then I'm going to set up the various animations for our spider unit here. So the spider unit, can we keep it simple? They're just going to move and be able to attack. So we need to set up their blend space and their uh, attack montage. So let's create a animation blend space 1D. And we're going to choose the spider. Uh, create a spider skeleton. And we'll do this one as spider move blend space. And in here, we're just going to look for our idle. Like that into the start. And then we're going to have a run, a walk. Okay. Uh, we've got a walk forwards there, so we'll drag that in like so. And we've got this movement now. Okay. The horizontal axis down here, we're going to change that one to speed. And zero is going to be the minimum. Maximum here we'll do as, I don't know, 500. Doesn't matter too much, uh, really. As long as it's higher, that's what matters. Okay, so we've got idle to moving the blend space. We're going to use that here. I'm not going to write about a state machine for this because, again, it's quite a simple setup animation wise, um, as it's mostly um, things like montages that will be used. So we need to drag that into a slot for the montages later. And then put that in to here. And the speed, we're going to promote that to a variable. On the event graph, we're going to go over to here. And we're going to, first of all, check that the porn owner is valid. And put that into our update animation. And to get the speed, you get the velocity. And you get the vector length of this. And that is your speed. We drag out speed, set speed, and plug that in. Okay. Uh, so now we go back to our spider unit, and we can set that spider anim up for him. There he goes. Okay, so now we've got our various units. We can click on each of these unit base positions here, and change their class down here to the ones we want. So that would be a spider unit. This one be a spider unit. This one will be a spider unit. Now, at the moment, we're making these uh, static and hard coded in what classes they'll be. But towards the end of this series, we'll go through and show how to make it randomized who you're going to get based on the level that you're in. Uh, but for now, we just set them up like this whilst we're developing the system. And likewise for the characters as well, you probably have a party greater than three, and you want to choose the three that you've got selected in as for your uh, combat. So again, that will come from a save file, which we'll do towards the end of the series. Uh, but for now, we do need to put this in, so we can see it all working. Let's just put that more in center. Put back a bit as well. Uh, so this one will be uh, Greystone, and this one will make Gideon. Okay, uh, so that's that. Uh, next, we're going to set up a camera system. So the camera, we're going to have a top-down camera like this, but then we're going to also have other cameras doing other things later on. But for now, we just want to set up a base camera to stand up above the whole entire arena here. So we're going to create a new blueprint class and choose Actor. And this is going to be the um, top... Uh, we'll do uh, camera underscore top-down. And in here, we're going to have a spring arm. And on the spring arm, we're going to attach a camera to it. So, and so for this, we're just going to rotate the spring arm around. It's up in the air a little bit and increase the target arm length to something like a thousand for now. We may have to tweak that later. Save and close that. And let's drag that into our environment here. Just going to turn that around and 
Now you can see the collision test is happening with the camera here. So we do want kind of collision testing happening, but what I'm going to do instead of having it um, collide with a floor, I'm going to tell it to basically change the spring arm's height. So if I click on this button here, I can just raise it up just a little bit. Now stop it colliding with the floor now. A little bit higher. Just drag that out again. Just make it a little bit higher. Bring on. There you go. Uh, so now that no longer collides with the floor. So let's just rotate that around. So I've got a good view. Of the environment. You can kind of see what it looks like down here. Uh, like so. I want to try and get in the center between the two parties. Okay, I'll do. Okay, so we need to tell the game to start with this uh, top-down camera, and that's going to be its main battle camera. So that's the one it defaults to when there's no one's turn being taken and nothing else is happening. So on the battle game mode, we're going to uh, go and make a function on here. Actually, no, we'll run a function. We'll just go to the begin play here. And begin play. We're going to get actor of class. And there should only be one of these cameras in your level. So we're going to do camera top down. And we're going to promote that to a variable. This will be the uh, main battle camera. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to get the player controller. And we're going to tell our player controller to set the view target to that. So we're going to do set view target blend and plug that into our new view target, leaving all the rest of it at zero and default. Okay, now alongside this, also in the game mode, we want to get access uh, and store the, who is uh, the party members and who are the enemy units as well. So after that, doing that, we're going to do get actors of class, and we're going to choose the party unit base, and we're going to promote that out actor here to a variable. That be party units and then we're going to do it again get all actors of class and we're looking at the enemy unit base and we're going to promote that to a variable as well that be our enemy units okay so now we've got a reference to all of that Brilliant. file and save that Okay, um, so that's all we need to do on the uh, game mode here. I want to go into my controller now, and we need to tell our controller to not manage the camera that they have. We want them. We want to have full control of our camera system. So one of the settings you have on the player controller is this auto manage active camera. Turn that off. That means that we now have to use set view target with blend in order to set the camera to what we want to do. So no, no longer if we possess something by any chance, it won't change it to that camera will keep it to where we currently are. And we also want to turn on show mouse cursor so we can click on things and, and so forth. Okay, um, I think that's it for here. We're going to hit compile and save that. And then we're going to close that there. So now if I were to push play on here, we should see our, oh, apologies. We have to tell our game mode to actually use this level. So, um, we're going to go into where's my starting point over here. Oh, I've lost it. That's over here. Um, we need to go to the world settings here, and we need to tell the world settings to go game mode override to switch to our battle game mode. Now, if I push play, it should set us up here. So here we've got our three main characters, and because they come with those um, assets already done uh, with the animations, they start off with these cool animations and like like forth. Um, and we've got some 
issues with a couple of them in the ground. We'll fix that in a second, but we can see the enemies are spawned in as well. So let's have a look at what's going on there. Um, so for this, this may be because it's colliding somewhat. We're going to rise this up a little bit at the ground. But it's always spawning it, remember? Um, which play there. There we go. I see my spider here is still a bit uh, wrong, and Faye over here is a bit wrong as well. Let's increase their height. So it's probably colliding with these little stones here, so it's pushing it down rather than up. So hit play. There we go. So we've got a lot better look here. I'm um, also going to view the camera a bit out, I think. So I'm going to click on the camera and increase that spring arm's target arm length to about 1200. So here we've got our player units over here on the left and we've got our enemy units over here on the right. Um, I might actually want to turn it around because usually you want your players on the right and the enemies on the left. That's just the general norm. So let's switch that around a bit. Now we can even rotate the camera around um, like so. Or you could switch the spaces over. It depends on what you want to try and do. Play on there. Okay, cool. There we go. That looks a bit better. Not a big fan of this shadow here, but uh, nonetheless, um, what we can do, this is being caused by this, so I'm actually going to delete this thing. That's a bit better. And see how that looks now. Yeah. yeah, okay, not too bad. And there you go, our enemies and our characters are now ready to take battle. In the next episode, we're going to now show the UI on the screen. So in the bottom corner of the screen, we can see the player's health and mana, as well as their action time bar as well. So join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can catch the next episode and all my videos before everyone else from just $1 a month. Big thank you to all my patrons, YouTube members, and everyone supporting me. And I will see you all next time. Bye, everyone.